today we're going to be doing a faction heart transport from Bridgewatch all the way to Limhurst, okay? You need 15 beast hearts if you're doing it from Bridgewatch. And the reason why you want to do it from Bridgewatch, preferably, is because Bridgewatch has a certain faction mount that flagged Bridgewatch players can use to dismount, increasing their move speed and chase you down to dismount you. If you are fighting any other faction, they do not have access to that specific mount's ability, meaning that they have a much harder time chasing you down. With that said, we are going to take the Limhurst contract. We're going to go ahead and read it. But you know what? Before we do that, let me tell you the best time to do faction transports, okay? And how to figure that out, because everyone's in a different time zone. It's pretty simple, okay? If you have Steam, which almost all gamers do, go ahead and open Steam, okay? Open Steam, hover over the store button, and then click stats. Alright, and this is going to show a worldwide graph of when there are the most gamers online. Now, this isn't indicative of Albion Online's highest and lowest populations. However, it's close enough to use. So, if you look at me here, it's going to show it in my local time. So, for me in real life, 8 a.m., to about 10 a.m. is the world highest population peak. So this is pretty much in Albion Online. If I were to play during this hour, this is when the most people are online. But for me, most people are offline around 7 p.m. until about 3 a.m., okay? Uh, this is whenever the world population dips down and less people are playing video games worldwide. Not entirely true for Albion Online. Albion Online is a worldwide game. However, you can still use this to judge when it's dead hours and when it is busy hours for Albion. So right now, my local time is actually 3 a.m. Uh, this goes up to 2.47 a.m. So we can look at the, the previous day. 3 a.m. is, uh, you know, it's starting to ramp up. So it's still a good time for me to do heart transports right now. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close that. And another thing, too, is I have a build guide... Uh, that I have put out, I believe, yesterday, if I did this right. It's still te technically uploading in my timeline, um, but you guys are from the future, so um, it's called The Best Build for Faction Heart Transport in Albion Online. Um, it should be transports with an S. I'll go ahead and fix that now. Um, there we go. And I'm using the Wild Boar build because it will, It not only is it faster than the Bear build, but it also allows me to act when dismounted without failing the mission. So we're going to go ahead and take the contract. And before we do, it says we need to deliver to Hornbeam Wood or Aspen Wood. So I'm going to open the map. And you can see that Hornbeam Wood is right here, whereas Aspen Wood is all the way over here. We don't really have a reason to go extra zones away. So we're going to open Hornbeam Wood. You see this little circle with a dot in the middle? That's where we're going to be going. Once we go there, we'll get the next part of the mission. And this guy says, Blow Sinji. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, now, one thing I also want to warn you about is there will almost always be a scout located somewhere around here. This scout is a bot that runs on a Discord that will automatically detect players flagging up for transport missions and take a snapshot of their name and gear. Alright, I don't know which one of these is a bot. So here we go, we're gonna go ahead and take it, and uh, like I said... Except, all right, let's move out and let's move out quickly. <laughs> so the bot has flagged me. It knows I'm doing a transport mission. Other players know I'm doing a transport mission because of this little translucent box floating around my character. Okay, they can also click meet my character and see this triple box icon at the top left of my not my nameplate. There, you see it. Three boxes. You are carrying a stack of heavy boxes. So anyone can click me, and you can see my inventory. I have the stack of unsuspicious boxes. And we're just gonna we're gonna go, and we're gonna turn them in. And then what's gonna happen is, is once we reach, once we come back to this zone, we will have about what is it, 21 or 22 additional hearts. Now it's also bandit assault time, which is a really really good time to do this because everyone's gonna be out doing bandit assaults. Do note that you can run to these little outposts if you're in danger, and they might be able to help you, but depending on your ganker, they might not. This build is absolutely built for withstanding tons of damage and running very quickly. So, the way my eyeballs are working right now is my eyes are in the direction that I am moving. If I am moving in the top right, my eyeballs are looking for red nameplates in the top right. 
It's that simple. Now, doing faction transports, I'm not at risk for losing my gear. So, that's why I'm wearing... And I'm lagging here. Oh, crap. There's a lot of lag. That's why I'm wearing a full 8-3 set. Why am I lagging so much? What is going on? Okay, this guy just scouted me, and he's following me. He's immediately following me, so this means that he could, you know, have gankers with him. This means that he can have all sorts of people. Uh, looking at his build, I'm going to go ahead and check it now. He is a catch build. You can see there he's got the the, the double-bladed staff. He's trying to run ahead of me. He, he definitely wants this loot, and he might have friends to be able to gank me, but I should be able to escape with my build. I'm not super worried. There's his other friend there. You see the red nameplates. Maybe that wasn't his friend, but you should never, you should always be a little suspicious. And that's a juke. So I'm going to go ahead and take another direction now because that guy's going to follow me the entire way and it's not worth it. I need to shake him off my, my trail. He made a mistake and zoned in first. So I have to take a longer route around now so that he doesn't scout me. But he could also be, you know, playing into... He could have friends down here, and he could be like, yeah, I just juked him, he's he's headed your way, guys, on Discord. You have to be very wary of these things, right? Another cool thing about this specific build is I could go in here into the Deepwood Enclave, and I can just um, take the tunnels, so to speak, and pop up in several different other places around the map, which uh, it's actually pretty easy to navigate because I am in a full tank build with high mobility and invisibility. So it's pretty darned easy to uh, to get through those. Even if there is a party of five in there, um, they would be a little bit away from home. Hopefully not, but you never truly know. All right, so we are going to be taking kind of a detour because that guy did scout us and he was following us, which means you always want to assume people have friends. Uh, let's see, uh, this Cheogar asks, why don't you say swole Bidji here anymore in the videos? And the reason why is every YouTuber prioritizes the first 30 seconds of the video being the most important. The first 30 seconds of a video, you have, as a YouTuber, you have to hold people's attention as much as possible. You cannot let them, let me turn off display capture. You cannot uh, let them click off your video. You need to get immediately and straight right to the point. People who have never watched me before do not care who I am. Uh, it is not relevant to the video in question that I say my name. If people want to stick around and enjoy my content and build a community around me, then they will know who I am at the end of the video. It's that simple. Uh, this is basically what every YouTuber does, every big YouTuber at least. Um, all of them make the first 30 seconds as intense and as packed full of information as possible. Now, you could, if you are some sort of crazy expert doing these faction transports, you could utilize the Roads of Avalon if you have them mapped out and scouted. However, they're very dangerous. And I would never take 8.3 gear into a black zone. That would be insanity. There's, it, it will never be worth it, okay? Um, but yeah, uh, we're just gonna go and transport our hearts here. And that ganker, he might have friends waiting for us in this next zone. He might not. He could have just been a bored guy you know, looking to follow me around because I am using my YouTuber name and not my anonymous account name. You never truly know. And I don't know why this guy's inviting me. Is he doing a transport also? He is not. So that's a little sus -mungus. That's a little odd. That's a little odd behavior. I don't know why he would send me an invite. Also, make sure to look out for fighting that's happening. Uh, it is banded events, so there really shouldn't be a lot going on right now. Um, but if there is, avoid blobs. You don't want to ride into an enemy blob, because, like, if there's 20 of them dismounted, they could knock you down. So we're, I'm going to hit reset camera, close my, my map, and reopen it immediately to immediately center my camera. I need to go up to long shadow, and then so on and so forth, so I'm just going to go ahead and go up here. I could also take, you know, a much longer roundabout way to get there, if I'm afraid of gankers or checkpoints or any of that kind of stuff, but... I'm not. I, I think that guy probably got bored. A lot of the times, these gankers will realize that it's not worth the hassle to chase you multiple maps unless they're truly, truly bored. Um, but that guy, he just had a catch set. He didn't, he didn't have any real way to kill this character unless he has lots of friends, you know, helping him out. Also, you don't ever really want to travel through red zones while doing this, especially in 8.3. There are so many scouts <laughs> at the edges of red zones. 
And if they say see an 8.3 guy go in, especially with a, an expensive mount and doing a transport mission, he's gonna holler at his 10 boys on Discord, and they're all gonna jump him and take his stuff. You don't wanna you don't wanna lose your stuff like that, okay? Faction heart transports already aren't really worth the time anyway, because they are not worth like I've been doing this what I mean half the video was explaining, but we'll have to see. Okay, there's a, there's a red guy. He's doing a he's doing a transport on a bear. See, he's doing the bear method. He uh, didn't quite have the right armor because he only had 2.3k HP, so that's uh, that's not good. But uh, he's he's out here transporting. He was only doing a smaller transport. Not sure why. Maybe he couldn't afford the big one. But uh, you pretty much want to go big or go home when doing the heart transports. All right, so we're we're almost there. We're at Spindlewood now. And remember, you, you can kind of take it easy here, but there are scouts sometimes on the edges here. So we're at Spindlewood. We need to go up uh, Gold Shimmer, Deepwood, and Hornbeam. So we're just going to go ahead and travel upward. And you need to beware on the map too. There is a lot of choke points on this map, so gankers could be set up. I'm going to be taking this northern, northwestern little bridge. If I see red names, I will abort immediately and go around to a different choke. Okay, but right now, I don't see any red names. Everything looks Gucci. Everything looks safe, nice and good. So I'm going to go ahead and cross this border here. And you can see there's there's no ganker checkpoint here. So we are, we're fine. Now we're just going to ride to the next zone. And uh, so far, so good on this heart transport. Now, um, if you've watched my other video, the bear build is absolutely great for doing this because it takes an entire team to dismount you. And if you abuse your mount's health when uh, abusing shields, you will regenerate your mount's health, making them waste a huge amount of time to dismount you to the point where it's not even worth it. Uh, I do recommend not traveling amongst the roads. Not amongst, among us. Uh, on the roads. Don't don't travel on the roads if you can help it because that's where gankers tend to scout transports because a lot of transport art transporters are bots, uh, believe it or not, and bots like to use the roads. So if you can help it, just cut, cut through the zone like I am because this is the road. Not only is it faster, but it's also less traveled. And if you want, you could use your Q ability and speed up, you know, your, your travel time just a bit. I'm not sure why I'm lagging. I must be updating like a game on Steam or something. Oh well, uh, it's fine. It's not really pertinent to the video now, is it? And you may be wondering, well, why don't you just speed this part up? This is kind of boring, you know? But you need to see the actual amount of time and effort and energy that this takes and how much profit you're going to expect. I want to tell you right now, even though it says my estimated market value is 351k, the real estimated market value is 750,000. Okay, so if I if I get killed, I lose 750,000 silver, and I'm only going to be making a small amount of that. Now, this is an interesting map because there's choke points, and I'm on the road, which I told you just not to do. Um, we do have a bridge watch blob there, and that is a point of safety. If gankers start attacking me or following me, I can ride to the blob, and the blob will protect me. And because I'm using the Dire Boar, I can move around unmounted at full speed without failing the mission, meaning I can participate in the blob if I want to. Uh, and like I said, safety in numbers, you know, they can kill all the gankers. The gankers can't, they're not going to kill me. I'm, I'm a full, full 8.3 plate. They're going to need a lot of them. All right, and I have, uh, I have the potions, the food, which um, I should have ate the food before recording. I didn't, but I can always eat it anytime I get dismounted. It's totally fine. All right, we are almost there. We, you can see uh, Hornbeam Wood is just up ahead, and we're going to go get the second part of the mission. And then we just ride back. Easy peasy. Very nice. Very simple. Now, how long did it take to ride here? I'm not sure. I'll have to review the video. You can see there's a nice little question mark quest area there for us, just like in, in any MMORPG. That yellow question mark. Nice and iconic. You can also abuse the shield that you get when you transition zones uh, to ride through mobs, just to make your trip a little bit faster. Now here's the cool thing, once I enter this circle I'm basically invisible and immune. If I was being followed by gankers and I pass this little barrier, I am now... Uh, immune. So there we go. We're going to turn this in and it's going to tell us to take it to uh, just return to the commander. The commander? <laughs> commander! Return to the commander and now I'm invisible. Look at this. I have invisibility for 30 whole seconds 
So you can use this opportunity to juke your gankers if they are camping outside of that circle. Okay, but uh, we don't have any gankers or stalkers. No gang stalkers, sadly. So we can just return back to Bridgewatch and turn these in, and there we go. And, and that, that's all heart transporting is, really. And we're going to see just how much profit we made, how long it took, and there you go. It's, uh, it's that simple. And also do note that doing this in full 8.3, you do risk the repair bill. What do we have here? We have uh, Camland Mace, I think. I think that was Camland Mace. Not, 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 too, not too bad. Like, he can hold me down for half a second because I have tons of crowd control reduction on this build. Um, and he's not going to be able to dismount me with just by himself. There we go. So we're riding by a blob, completely safe, we're fine. I don't think Limhurst is going to backdoor these dudes, so we're pretty much riding to safety. You always have to be careful outside of town, though, because there are small bands of gankers just looking to farm faction points, killing people as they ride around. So, uh, but I'm not worried, like I said, I'm in full 8-3, I have, you know, an invisibility cape, the giant potion, I have tons of health, and uh, they're not going to catch me. This guy's doing a transport too, look at him go. Ooh, that's a juicy target if I was in my gank set. But, well, right now I'm just a courier, just like him. We're just big rigging it on the roads of uh, Albion Online here. Honk honk, you know, I honk my train horn. Train horn? Uh, truck horn? Okay, we need to go down, we need to go south, avoid the roads. And remember, the direction that you ride is where your eyeballs should be. So I'm staring at the bottom middle-ish of my screen looking for red plate names, especially if they're dismounted. Uh, if I, if I, I'm going to explain how you can tell if a player is dismounted for those that may not know. If you see a nameplate and it has a small yellow bar under their mana bar, so let me show you real quick. Uh, the top is my health, the middle, the blue one is my mana, and the bottom one is my mount's health. If you see a red name and they don't have that third yellow bar on the bottom, that means they are dismounted, which means they can start casting and attacking with abilities when you ride near them. So if you see a red name without that yellow bar, you need to turn around and go, go a different direction because they are dismounted and waiting for you. Also, if you see a red name and you it immediately vanishes, it doesn't fade out, that means they casted invisibility and they are waiting for you to get closer so they can pop out of invisibility and dismount you. So those are things to look out for. It's really hard to catch people uh, that do invisibility because if they have their volume turned up and they're using the proper sound equipment in real life, they can hear you approaching before your nameplate appears on their screen and before their nameplate appears on your screen, which means they can cast invisibility before you ever see their nameplate. And by the time that their invisibility will wear off, they will be right on top of you, ready to dismount you. And I, again, this, I apologize for this stuttery lag. I am not sure what's going on there. Uh, also, another tip for doing heart transports is bind a key to auto run, okay? The button to the ab above tab, I believe it's called tilde. Uh, it is the button to the left of the one key. Uh, I have that set to auto run, so I push that button once, there we go, I'm on auto run, and anywhere I point my mouse, my character will just follow it. So I don't have to sit here and hold right click and cramp my hand the entire time. Like, I spent two and a half hours at the gym the other day and my hands are cramped to hell, so just holding right click is extremely painful right now. I have the, the, the thumb joint. Uh, when you transition zones, your auto run turns off, so just hit that button again and turn that auto run back on. This allows you to move while opening and looking at your map as well. Reset camera, ilm ilm, and there we go. We can see where we're at and where we need to be is bridge watch. So, uh, I pretty much know the way here. There's a couple chokes. I'm on the roads, not good. But yes, uh, <laughs> the thumb joint, like I said, very painful. So I don't want to sit here and hold my mouse and hold the right click. I'd rather take it easy. And while you're doing this too, like if you have a nice straightaway like we do and you, you feel pretty confident, you can take a bite of like an in real life sandwich or a, like a bowl of cereal or something, a bowl of oats. You know, you can snack while you do this. You can chit chat on Discord. Um, the, the thing is while auto running, you can't really alt tab out of your window because that's going to mess it up, okay? It's a little bit harder to do unless you layer your windows over your game, which is just weird, but there you go. 
So we're almost home, and we're going to get us a, a little chunk of profit here, and we're going to sell that, make a little bit of money, hopefully. Who knows? We could die. We could absolutely be killed at this point. We could be killed at any point during this adventure and lose 750,000 silver. Completely gone. And, uh, okay, let's reactivate our auto run. That guy is nearly dead. Holy crap. He's got 42 HP left. What's he doing? And he did... Whoa, they killed... Oh, no. He killed the mob, but he also died. Well, Wesmore White. Um, not sure what Wesmore is, but... Uh, your, uh, your valiant actions, your heroic deeds were caught on camera today. Oh, it is, a. Uh, it's actually kind of busy for a Tuesday morning on Albion Online. I gotta say, like, why are, why is everyone playing at this hour? Is it a holiday or something that I don't know about? Is it Labor Day or something? No, it's, it's August 30th. Um, I'm not sure what's going on on August. Oh, there's a red name. He's mounted, though. You see him? He, he, his name faded away, so he's riding away from me at a high speed. Or he's zoned out to a different zone. All right, we, we're almost to Bridgewatch. At this point, if I get dismounted, I can just run to town with Wanderlust. Also, you see this chest on the map here? Don't ride through that. It, you become PvP flagged, and people can down you, even if they aren't faction flagged. Okay, so uh, <laughs> that guy's name is Ochado. Ochado. Uh, very cool. Very cool name. Any any name with chat in it, very nice. Very Very, very neat. And remember, you can ride through your own faction's uh, little outpost there if you want. Just a little extra bit of safety. Now, because the chest is not activated yet, I won't be PvP activated. So it's cool to ride through it. It's totally fine. All right, and here we go. We're about to turn this bad boy in and get our extra hearts because you get extra hearts for this. Now, do note that you can make the trip longer. I could have went to Fort Sterling from Bridgewatch and then returned, and I will get more hearts for doing that. Or even all the way to Thetford. But is it worth the money per hour to do that over just going to Limhurst? I don't think it is. It's also way more risky because you're transver you're traversing many, many more zones. Anyway, so here we are. We're going to turn this in, and it's super laggy. Come on, computer, you can do this. And give items. There we go. So now we have 19 hearts, so that earned us 4 hearts. Which, if I unstack them like so, because I initially bought 15, the four hearts are worth 200k. So, this entire video, I made 200k, and um, I could probably do this three times an hour, so that's only 600k an hour. But my gripe is that you get nothing else for doing this. You do not get faction points. You do not get combat fame credits. You don't earn nothing. And, it's, and you have all the risk, and your gankers have zero risk. So there you go. That's Faction Heart Transporting. That's what it looks like. That's how to do it. That's what to watch out for. That's how to be careful. This is the build that I used. I have a video that covers the builds. Go check it out on my channel. I'm Soul Benji. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be a bro and stay swole. I, uh, I make videos every single day. Make sure you're subscribed. Come back tomorrow for another video. I read every comment, so feel free to leave a comment and a like, of course. Uh, with that said, if you want to financially help me out because I am poor as heck in real life, then click the thanks button down below. Your donation will show up in the comment section, and if it's big enough, it changes the color of the comment box. Very cool stuff. You can also become a channel member, five bucks a month, and there is a playlist in the pinned comment. If any of those videos interest you, um, feel free. I'm just going to quick sell because I don't care about losing 2k per, which is a 30, losing 30k there doing that, but that's fine. It's okay. It's okay that I lost that 30k. Anyway, guys, um, become a channel member. It's like subscribing on Twitch, but it's on YouTube, and YouTube is way cooler. Uh, with that said, thank you so much. I'll see you in tomorrow's video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. Take care. Mwah.